morning everybody and welcome to Wednesday's Thought for the Day. I hope you're well. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. Um, we're continuing our look at what it means to walk with Jesus. We'll be doing this for the next few days and um, we've been looking so far at Luke 14. Haven't we? We're going to change this morning and if you wanted to follow it in your, in your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. going to look at these verses uh, maybe for today and perhaps tomorrow as well. Um, and pick up some of the thoughts from there, what Paul thinks about what, it, what it's like to be a follower of Jesus, to walk with him. Uh, but before we go into all of that, let's, uh, let's pray as always, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you again for this lovely morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come around your word. And we pray, Lord, that once again, you'll help us, Lord, as we want to walk with you. Help us, Lord, equip us and strengthen us and uh, teach us, Lord, something from your word again through your Holy Spirit this morning. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, walking with Jesus, as we've said. Um, we've talked about it so far, is it, it kind of at the beginning of it all, really. We need to sit down and count the cost. There is a cost involved, haven't we? We talked about that yesterday. And uh, making sure we understand what it takes to, to walk with Jesus. We don't just, it's not just, uh, we, we don't just kind of walk into it haphazardly, but we, we recognise this is a, a, a change of lifestyle, a change of heart. It, we are starting anew, starting afresh. That means we yeah, the Bible calls it being born again, doesn't it? We are completely different. So what does that look like for somebody who walks with Jesus? We've heard about how hard it is. It's difficult sometimes, as you said yesterday, the cost that's involved in that and whether we're prepared to, we're up for that, to give Jesus everything. Apologise again for the docs next door. So what does it look like for you? How, how have you, you know, what are, are there any things that we hold on to? These were the questions we were talking about. What can Jesus do through you rather than for you? Paul writes to Timothy here as he thinks about this, his walking with Jesus. Let's read some of these verses here. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in, in civil, civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules and the hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops so reflect on what i'm saying for the lord will give you insight into all of this paul's trying to help his kind of young protege timothy as he's um writing to him from a prison cell actually and he's saying listen this is what it's like to walk with jesus and it's not, not easy it's tough but there is help at hand, Timothy, remember. And he starts off by saying that, doesn't he? Um, it, it's not surprising that following Jesus, walking in his footsteps is difficult because Jesus' footsteps were difficult. And we, we want to emulate him. We want the blessings. We want the glory of that. But we also need to recognise that Jesus was walking to a cross. Uh, and the, as my old college principal used to say, the way up is down. We start on our knees, don't we? We start with repentance and faith. And so we start on our knees and then we walk and the walk, the road sometimes rough and steep and it's difficult, but we will get there. And that's what we're promised. And God is with us on the journey, as we were talking about yesterday. But he also helps us along the way. And how does he do that? Well, the clues in the very first verse that we read just then, walking with Jesus relies on his grace. And grace is a wonderful word, isn't it? It's a wonderful concept. It's a wonderful thought and it's a wonderful reality. For those of us who walk with Jesus, who are trying to walk with Jesus, Paul's first words to Timothy in this in this chapter were, you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be, our strength for the journey is in Christ. Sometimes, you know, the, the hardest part of any walk, you know, as I've said before, I love walking and going out and being out in God's good creation. It's wonderful to see it, especially on days like today. Um, but sometimes the road is rough and steep and, you know, walking up hills and mountains and things is not easy. And often the hardest bit is nearest the end. You know, uh, when you can see the summit, you can see you're nearly there, but it's still difficult to actually get to the top. And your legs are tired and burning with all the energy that you've, uh, you're, you're, you're expending with that there. You're breathing heavily, but it's so worth it when you get to the top. And in a sense, the walk with Jesus is like that, isn't it? And we, we are given grace strengthened by his grace what a wonderful word you know another one of my passions is liverpool of course football club and we, I go, we used to go and watch them regularly and sing along with that wonderful anthem you will never walk alone but with 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 
following Jesus and walking with Jesus, we don't ever walk alone. It's so it's important to remember that. So if we're struggling with the journey and wondering whether it's all worth it, well, actually it is because Jesus is with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Even what at the darkest moments, Psalm 23 comes into it here, doesn't he? He's our good shepherd. He walks with us. He talks with us along life's narrow way. He goes with us through the valleys. And when it's difficult and it's dark and it's dangerous and he leads us beside still waters, those wonderful moments. Some of us call them mountaintop experiences. He's with us then. Um, he, he leads us to pastures new. He restores our souls when we're tired and when we're thirsty, and when we're worrying. And he refreshes us in everything. He, he is the one who helps us through life and walks us through all our lives here and now in the difficulties promising that one day there will be a table set before us in the presence of our enemies and a mountaintop view to experience of the glory of all his creation which we will sit at, at his you know in heaven with him in heavenly places with him that's the that's the, the promise isn't it so much more of a, of a better story as we say for life than trying to live life without Jesus where you struggle with all these same things but without Jesus walking with you so walking with Jesus is worth it and we get this wonderful grace that comes this grace of Jesus grace to forgive us when we mess up when we make mistakes grace to forgive us we how many of us make mistakes along the journey of life and we think that we've messed it up and it's it's there but no gee, grace to forgive grace to teach us through his word grace through the Holy Spirit the Lord Jesus comes alongside us encourages us and builds us up in the faith and helps us to keep going when the road is rough and steep, as we said, to teach us, to help us to understand what's going on. We don't know it all. We'll never know as much as God, but we, we get to know something of that. We get to hear some of his heart because he walks with us. Grace to lead us when we don't know the way. When, when you know, we, sometimes we must, you know, if, it must be despairing for, you know, for a normal person when, when you're constantly having to teach them the same things again, constantly having to lead them when they don't, they keep you know messing things up or whatever and we're all like that when we're walking with Jesus and yet his grace wants to lead us and say come on follow me I, this is the way to go I know exactly where it is like that good shepherd we were talking about before grace sometimes to discipline grace sometimes to discipline when we need it you know a good father a good a good parent will discipline their child and won't just let them get away with murder because they know what it will benefit them going forward and we all, we, as, as adults, as we walk with Jesus, we still need his discipline because we are so willful. And we're, we're as daft as children sometimes making the same mistakes. And so God sometimes has to discipline us. And, and it's well documented in the scriptures. And difficult things happen to us sometimes because we've made stupid decisions. But Jesus is always with us. His hand of discipline is in it all. And his hand of love is in it all. His hand of forgiveness and teaching and correction. And ultimately, though, the most, the most amazing part of God's grace is he's there with us as we walk with Jesus to take the blame when we sin. Jesus went to the cross for us, didn't he? So the, the sin and the rebellion and the choosing of our own way, which would normally lead us away from walking with Jesus, get us on the wrong path, irretrievably lost, with no hope of ever finding the right way and feeling lost and alone and, and like life's not worth living at times. And we face that on our own and, and we would do if it wasn't for Jesus. Wonderful grace that died on the cross for us, that took the blame for us so that we can be invited back on the journey with him again. What wonderful grace we have from our Lord Jesus isn't it? when we're walking with him. There is no other way, no better way for us to walk through life than with him, isn't it? Well, do you need something of God's grace today? Do you need to know that for forgiveness, for correction and teaching, perhaps to leadership, to a direction? For discipline, perhaps for you, you need that too. Grace to take the blame and to remember that we don't face the guilt of our sin because he has faced it for us. What wonderful grace. This is the grace that we can be strong in. That Paul says to Timothy, be strong in this grace as you walk in with Jesus, Timothy. It's going to get tough. But remember, it's not about you. It's about him and what he's done. John 1 verse 16 says, from his fullness, we've, we've received grace upon grace. It's the constant message of Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Paul again says, by grace we were even saved in the first place. We don't boast in anything of ourselves, we can't. We're walking on this journey, but the only way we're going to get through it, life's journey, is with Jesus, and we boast in him because it's a, it's a journey we can live and enjoy and, 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 and be blessed in 
because of him and only because of him. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is always going to be sufficient for you. So many promises about God's grace for us this morning. So what do we do in response to that? We don't rely on our own abilities. We don't think we can do it ourselves. We're not good enough. We'll never be able to do walk this walk without Jesus. So we trust in his grace and not our own strength. We abide closely with him to understand his grace. So in other words, through prayer, reading his word and regular fellowship with other believers and, and Christians to encourage one another in his word and as we pray. It's important, isn't it? Getting those daily disciplines right. And we'll look at that tomorrow a little bit more. And constantly asking for it. James 4 verses 2 to 6 says he gives more grace. Grace for every situation. And it's there for us each day. What a wonderful promise. How encouraging this morning. If you're finding walking with Jesus difficult and your walk is tough, then we have more grace. Are we relying on it though? The danger is that sometimes we know that's there, but we still rely on our own abilities and things and, um, and if you like, do the things that we've just been saying. And so we miss the benefits of walking in the grace. Don't be strong in yourself. Don't walk with our own strength and think we're going to get there by ourselves. Follow the shepherd, follow the good shepherd Jesus and rely on his grace. Be strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ as you walk with him today. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you that along this journey, as we walk with you, we will know it each day. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And we are so grateful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, again this morning. Amen.